Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here with a word from James, chapter 1, starting at verse 19 till the end. This is challenging. Check this out. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Hmm. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity and naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what what manner of man he was. Pat's two cents. In other words, oh well. Yeah. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Mm. Mm. Yeah, how many of us can say we really rise to that occasion? I have never seen so many born-again Christians on Facebook and YouTube and and hearsay from Twitter because I don't even check Twitter out. I mean, just blasting people, calling them all kind of racial slurs and making all kind of disrespectful, contemptible comments. Just, I mean, it's bizarre that for that to come from a self-proclaimed Christian. It's like the, the behavior is so diametrically opposed to the one you represent. And then I have to ask you, were you ever filled with the Holy Spirit? Because when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not comfortable with certain things flying out of your mouth. You're not comfortable with hurting people's feelings. I don't care how much they, dis- they disagree with you. It's difficult because of the love in your heart for them. It's difficult for you to just blatantly say whatever comes off your mouth because, hey, I'm grown. I can say what I'm big and bad enough to you. Don't like it? Lump it, baby. Deal with it. It's the way I feel. Well, that's not love. God is love. And this is talking about perfect This talks about having a perfect heart, a perfect spirit. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. You know, we are to care for one another. Your feelings matter to me. When you see people on TV... Just because they have money and all the honey that goes with the money, it doesn't mean that they're a happy camper. Just because they're smiling and in control does not mean that they are whole. You really have to watch how you prejudge people. See, man judges the outward appearance. God judges the heart. So be slow about having so much to say. If there's a disagreement going on, 
Stay out of it. I don't care what you say. You're not going to change the world. All you're going to do is make somebody mad because nine times out of ten, if you have no control over this, you have no control over this because you have no control over this. And when out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you spew out poison, venom, hatred, disrespect, contempt, murderous words, then what you're doing is exposing to the world what's really in your heart. And if what's in your heart does not reflect the one who created that heart, nine times out of ten, you're not a born-again Christian. You're a professing Christian, but not a possessing. You don't possess the fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, mercy, kindness, consideration, thoughtfulness. You, you know, you, you're not um, representing that. You're not showing that in your actions. You're giving lip service to it. You're proclaiming, you're naming, claiming, grabbing, blabbing and grabbing, but you're not doing the works. You're not being that example of true love. Many of us, when we come to the Lord, don't really know what love is. When you come to grips with that, you start asking God, Lord, show me how to love in the true meaning of the word. When you're willing to do that, then you're willing to lay aside the differences. You're willing to lay aside your personal opinion. You're willing to lay aside your agenda. You're willing to lay down the daggers that, that are so quick to cut from your tongue. You're willing to lay that down. Because the love in your heart won't allow you to have at it like that. So I ask you. Do you really love your fellow man? Or do you only love those that agree with you and hate those that don't? Jesus said, you're no more, you're no better than the scribes and Pharisees. The person that disagrees with you is not your enemy. Yet, Jesus said, love your enemy. So, if you are to love your enemy, and the person just disagrees with you, that's not your enemy. You're in the same country. You're supposedly on the same side. Then if you can't love them, there is no way you will ever learn how to love your enemy. And if you don't care to love them, you don't think they're worthy of your love, I guarantee you, God doesn't look at you as being worthy of his. Yes, as you have done it to the least of these, so you have done it to me. That includes the good, the bad, the indifferent, and the ugly. <laughs> 